Greetings, Earthlings. This is Alan Boyle with GeekWire, and we're at the Space Symposium in Colorado Springs to look at this thing. This is the Blue Origin booster that flew to space and back five times. It's the first suborbital reusable rocket uh, and really made history, and it's here on display at one of the premier space shows in the country. Uh, so this was built down in Kent, Washington, uh, and launched from West Texas and there are a few features that help this thing get to space and back like the landing legs. You've got four landing legs here which are retracted during launch and then they come out uh, for the descent after the booster has uh, powered the crew capsule to space, the booster refires its uh, engine, its BE3 engine, fueled by hydrogen and oxygen, and uh, comes down, breaks itself from supersonic speeds. Uh, it has some things to help with that, like uh, these aft fins that you see on the side and up there. Uh, help with the aerodynamics of the booster. And uh, you also have uh, ring fins up at the top which help slow down the, the booster during its supersonic fall. Those things get a little toasted on the way down and so in the next iteration of the New Shepard booster they'll probably be using a different coating to keep the wear and tear down on those ring fins. So the whole point of this suborbital booster is to put this crew capsule into space. It can carry payloads, it's done that during the uncrewed missions that have been flown already, but eventually they're going to put people inside and so they've put a lot of thought into the seats and the cameras and the screens that are going to be inside. And uh, let's take a look. Come on in. And the best way here is to take take a seat and then swing your legs over. Hi, I'm Arya. Okay. I think we've met here we go. Into Blue Origins seats nice on a spaceship. Nap time. And then rotate your legs. How are you doing? I'm Arya Corden. There's a little screen screen. You can see what's going on here. Uh, yes, please come on in. And these are some of the largest windows in a spaceship. So we're all piling in. We'll have about six folks in here. The capsule holds six and uh, can take people up to more than 100 kilometers in altitude. The crew capsule goes up on top of the rocket to about 250,000 feet or 75 kilometers. And then at that point, the booster and the crew capsule separate. And at that point, the capsule continues to go into space over the Kármán line to 100 kilometers. At this point, this is when we're going to let you unbuckle. You're going to get four minutes or so of, uh, of, of zero G uh, and weightlessness. So we, uh, we hope that you're going to be able to turn some somersaults. You're going to uh, gaze out of those gorgeous windows, uh, maybe old Superman or Superwoman, across the capsule um, and really enjoy yourself. Um, Zero G etiquette, though, will be part of the training, so um, we want to make sure that you enjoy yourself as well as your crewmates enjoy the experience as well. Uh, at the end of your four minutes, we're going to let you know that it is time to buckle back in. Um, you'll see it here on your screen, but also you'll uh, have uh, communications uh, down to the ground with your crew member seven, um, who is the same person who will be helping train you in the day before you go up to, to space. Um, you peak at about three G's on the way up, and just for a minor second, at about five, five and a half G's. But what's nice about these uh, very comfortable seats that you see here, you're in that reclined position not only for comfort, but it helps disperse those G's. So these are in-house design seats. They're based on a, on a helicopter model, right? Because they, they're good at taking the downward forces. But really, when you, uh, you, know, when you have, again, just momentarily, three G's on the way up, five and a half G's on the way down, it's going to help disperse them. So it's really, it's going to be a pretty comfortable ride. The, uh, the chutes have come out, first the droves, then followed by the mains. You're going to go at about 15, 20 miles an hour. And then at the last second, there's our retro thrust system, which is the, at the, the outside base of the crew capsule, which is going to fire and give you that last minute cushion of air to really uh, make it a, a smooth landing. There it is. So congratulations, you guys have gone up into space and back. So, uh, so this is this is one of the main cameras here. This will also have the downlink for us. So we want to make sure that 
you know, hey, Alan, if you're, you know, your, your buckle isn't quite right, we'll be able to tell you that. We'll have several cap uh, cameras here also in the, in the, the uh, solid rocket motor area as well as some in the, in the screens here to get those selfies for you. Uh, there will be uh, there will be a flight suit, but it's a shirt sleeve environment. So um, you know we we want you to feel as unencumbered as possible, right? But we'll make sure that you get a you get a cool space suit. We're we're working on those details right now, though. Number one thing is the engineering of the entire system. They're like a frequent flyer plan. Or? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, details that are that are in the works. Um, but uh, but yeah, of course we want. Of course, we're going to want repeat customers. I'm, I'm, I'm sure as soon as people go up and they come back down, they're going to want to do it again, and we'll be, we'll be ready for them. So you have to watch your step when you step out of here. I had a great time in there, and I'm looking forward to flying on the real thing. That is, if I can afford it. For GeekWire, this is Alan Boyle saying, watch the skies.